America's greatest ally in the fight against ISIS has had boots on the ground for a thousand years. Howard Kabani, Kurdish American, is with us today. Welcome, Howard. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, Howard, you are someone who not only is from Kurdistan, but has worked extensively in Kurdistan in many different capacities. Yes. Uh, I was born and raised in Kurdistan and uh, came to America later after graduation and uh, also worked in the area and uh, have read a great deal about the history and the situation in the area. And so today we want to take advantage of all of your experience. We, we want to ask you questions that uh, talk about ISIS, talk about Turkey, talk about Syria, Russia, the whole area over there. And maybe, just maybe there's a country that we haven't talked about, and that's Saudi Arabia that we have to as well. Um, in terms of, of Kurdistan itself, there's not a Kurdistan. Why not? Well, there is Kurdistan in reality. However, in politics, uh, there is no Kurdistan on the map because of the uh, politics of the region and the politics of uh, petroleum. Kurdistan was a country in history, and it was united uh, under the Ottoman Empire, by the way, who lost the war to the Allies after World War I. And then Kurdistan was divided among the Allies, and uh, and it fell under four different countries: current countries of Turkey, Iran, mm -hmm. Iraq, and Syria. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the map up because if you look at Kurdistan right now, um, it it would take parts. I mean, this is where the Kurdish people live right now, right? Right. And it surprisingly is a is a large country, and not only in area but in population too. Yes, uh, Kurdistan is in, in population is uh, ab about uh, 30 million uh, p people. Uh, the estimates are not uh, not solid because uh, the countries that uh, control the Kur Kurdistan would not want to uh, to enlarge the numbers or to to uh, to, uh, to to tell the truth. Uh, and, and the area is as big as France, in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. Kurdistan is bigger than many uh, countries in the region. For example, uh, Kuwait is, is like uh, one-tenth uh, of Kurdistan in, in area and population. Oh. And, and many other countries. Uh, well, yeah, mentioned. actually, I want to I get a, a, the, the next map up because we've got a map of the world. And just here's just a few countries that Kurdistan is bigger than. The Netherlands, Ecuador, Cambodia, Belgium, Bolivia, Sweden, Austria, Ireland, That's Israel, true. and more. Kurdistan is bigger than all of those, yet it doesn't have its own country. Yes, and, and that's unfortunate. Uh, the tragedy of the Kurds has uh, started uh, with the discovery of oil in the Middle East. So that's what's important. That was what uh, was important then, and hopefully that will change now because of the importance of the Kurds for world peace and stability in the region. Tell us about the, the Kurdish people. We've got a, a, we're going to get a nice picture up, uh, a woman right in the middle, uh, there seems like there's respect for the woman, and, and you can see the yes. woman's face. Yes, uh, the Kurdish people uh, are Indo-European in origin, and they have inhabited Kurdistan for more than 10,000 years, uh, as far as we can go back in history, and maybe more. In fact, uh, they discovered Neanderthals in Kurdistan. Uh, the Kurdish culture is very open culture, and it's uh, kind of more like uh, Eastern and European in, uh, mixed up. We, we uh, respect women as equal par uh, parts of the society. Women have, uh, in, in history of the Kurds, uh, governed. And we have uh, uh, poets and uh, we have people right now, uh, th they are a very important part of the society. Uh, and the Kurdish culture, unlike uh, other uh, cultures around us, uh, have uh, had origins from uh, the Zoroastrian religion, which is a very uh, tolerant religion. The, the Kurdish people themselves, are they a gentle people? Are they a warlike people? What are they? Well, the Kurdish people, generally speaking, are very uh, gentle and respectful and a uh, very high uh, degree of hospitality and uh, those kind of features that, that really uh, are hard to describe unless you go and become a, a guest in a Kurdish uh, house. Uh, however, because of the uh, situation that the Kurds faced, uh, atrocities and, and the pe various people trying to control the Kurdish society 
the Kurds have hardened uh, and they became uh, fighters for their freedom. The Kurds people are freedom fighters and they love freedom and they will not tolerate anybody to, to control their lives. Well, They're in a way like Americans. They, they, uh, they love freedom. In, in fact, in Iraq, uh, under Saddam Hussein, uh, the Kurdish language was forbidden. You couldn't speak your language. Yes, and, and that was part of Arabization policy to, to, uh, to destroy the Kurdish culture and society and turn them into Arabs, which in, in, in part they were successful, uh, but they were, did not succeed ultimately. If Saddam was staying in power for a long time and checked, they would have uh, accomplished that. Are Kurdish uh, Muslims? The Kurds generally, uh, in, uh, the majority are Muslims. Uh, the, the, they have both Sunni and uh, Shiite Islam in them. However, we have Kurdish Christians and Kurdish Jews and Kurdish uh, Zoroastrians who are the Yazidis. The Yazidis, um, we're going to ask about the Yazidis a little bit later on right. because it's just amazing to me that, you know, as to why anybody would go after that particular group. Howard, I want to bring something to you from that Al Jazeera says. Kurdistan is a kind of a dream an ancient one that floats along cities and valleys through crumbling souks and oil fields stretched across four nations. Is, is that pretty accurate? Well, uh, to a degree it is act accurate, but it's, it's really, it's in reality, the Kurdistan is there and the potential to become a state is there. The, the, all the elements of a, of a Kurdish society is there. The language, uh, history, and, and, and the people are there. And you have a military. And we have military power now. Uh, we always had, but now it's stronger because of the aid of the U.S., of course. People look at the Middle East, here in the United States, people look at the Middle East and they think terrorist. Are you a terrorist? Not really. Uh, most Kurds are, uh, all of Kurds are not. There are some bad guys, but... Uh, we have bad guys here, too. We have bad guys everywhere. So. Uh, Terrorism is, is a totally different subject than people. People cannot be terrorists as a whole. But there are some, uh, some, some individuals who try to, to uh, control people and brainwash them and turn them into violent terrorists. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to be going over that as well. Let's go to the second part of the quote, though. Nestled between empires, surrounded by conquerors, the inhabitants of greater Kurdistan have shared this dream for hundreds of years. Is that how long you've wanted a country? Yes, with Kurdistan has uh, been a dream of the Kurds for a long time. Uh, we had a uh, Kurdish empire 10,000 years ago called the Media Empire. But then after that, the Kurds have struggled to unite and become one state because we had so many enemies around uh, Kurdistan, uh, Persia, uh, Ottoman Empire and, and all the other uh, empires uh, and then uh, the, the rise of the Arabs after Islam who came and conquered uh, Kurdistan also. So we had so many uh, challenges to, for a united Kurdistan. Um, what would, it, what would, it, would it have taken before this for there to have been a Kurdistan, a state, a country? The best opportunity was uh, after World War I when President Wilson declared in his 14 uh, points for peace that the Kurds uh, should be given the uh, right for uh, independence. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the right for independence of Armenia was uh, accomplished, but then when it came to the right of the Kurds for independence, it was abandoned by the Allies, unfortunately. Foreign Policy Magazine just earlier this year says that the world's next country is Kurdistan. Are you encouraged by that? Is, are they right? Are you, is Kurdistan about ready to become its own country? Yes, from all the indications and the necessity really for, for the world, for the Kurds to become a country, it's important. It's, it's really vital for the, for the peace in the region and, and for America as an ally. They need a country like Kurdistan. But the United States has depended upon Israel as its primary ally in the Middle East for quite some time now, it's certainly at least since World War II, and keeping the peace over there. Can Israel not do that? Israel hasn't been able to keep the peace in the Middle East. They have tried to keep the peace in, in Israel, but as you know, in the Middle East it's, it's exploding and it's, uh, it's hard to keep peace. And now the only people who are really fighting the terrorists in, in Middle East are the Kurds. 
and they are the best allies that America has ever had in the Middle East. In, in fact, uh, the foreign policy article also says that uh, the United States is indeed the ones who today are putting Kurdistan back on the map and back on the forefront by saying this. There's two reasons. The establishment of a no-fly zone over the region after the Allied victory over Saddam in 1991. And then number two, the overthrow of Saddam in the U.S.-led invasion in 2003. Is that right? That's right. Uh, that was the beginning of, of uh, the return of the Kurds to power. But it's not completed yet because of oil politics. We have tried to appease uh, you know, the Saudi Arabia and Iran and Turkey because of the oil politics and ignoring an important ally like the Kurds. What do you mean by oil politics here? Oil politics, uh, in order for, for us to, to uh, appease the countries that have oil, we had to uh, abandon the idea of that Kurdis the Kurds should be independent or Kurdistan should be separated from Iraq. Although Iraq was not a real country before World War I, but they wanted to maintain this, that status quo because we didn't want the Saudis and the Iraqis and uh, the others in the area to be uh, upset with us. But the reality is the uh, Kurds need to be independent because they've been so mistreated in the past history. Kurds have oil, don't you? Yes, we have a lot of oil, and that's really the tragedy. We have had the oil, but the Iraqis and the Turks and the Persians, they have taken it from our country. And, 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 and the other countries, the superpowers, haven't seen that, or they, they, they just wanted to continue the deal with those governments, knowing that the actual oil resources and the natural resources are in Kurdistan. But the, today, though, the actual control over a significant amount of oil, oil fields is in Kurdish hands. Today it is, and that's why it's becoming really more uh, realistic to have a Kurdish state, because they see that the Kurds are a, a better ally than most of the people in the region, and they're more pro-West and pro-freedom and pro-democracy. Are there several Kurdistans, are there several Kurdish sects, if you will? There are. Uh, right now, because of the situation in Kurdistan uh, being divided in, into those countries, every part is, is a little different in their politics and their, and their behavior. But their real dream is to unite under one country someday. But right now, it's, it's a different uh, situation. It w wouldn't it be very, very difficult, though, for there to be a, a Kurdistan as a country itself, since you would take from Syria, from Iran, from Iraq, and from Turkey? In, in practice, it is difficult, however, but this situation is an artificial situation created after World War I. The Allies divided the region in this way. It, it's not set in stone. The people are the same people on all those borders, but the, the borders are artificially created by the Allies, which now need to be changed. You know, it's an interesting thing. Here in the United States, um, we hardly ever look at World War I as anything that is current or relevant to us today. But in your country and in most other countries around the world, something that's only been 100 years ago is very relevant. It's very relevant and it has created so much tragedy in the region. The Kurds have suffered in, in, in all those four countries and the hands of the majority so much that it's hard to believe. And, and you can see what some of these criminals are doing to the Kurds even today in, in, in parts of Iraq. They are controlling part of the population, like the Yazidi situation. Mm -hmm. They are Kurds, and they were destroyed by these uh, terrorists. And we have had faced, we faced this situation ever since uh, after the, uh, the invasion of Kurdistan by the Arabs and other people. You know, if, if you were Jewish, talking to me about this very thing, I would say, you know, yes, I understand you have been persecuted for a long, long time. Um, is, is there a similarity between the way that the Jews have been treated and the way the Kurds have been treated? Yes, especially since after World War I and the division of Kurdistan and uh, Kurds becoming a minority in each state and trying to become, to gain some freedom from these uh, regimes who are dictators, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it has created a lot of tragedies in people's lives. And that's one of the reasons I had to leave my home country and come to America for freedom. Mm. Um, 
Turkey is a country that has been a strategic ally of the United States for quite some time. Um, it is strategically located and always has been strategically located between the oil-rich region of Saudi Arabia and other parts of the Middle East and the Soviet Union, which of course now is Russia. Um, at the same point in time, Turkey hates Kurds. Why? Well, they hate the Kurds because the Kurds are trying to gain the, their uh, freedom. They are, they are controlling the Kurdistan, uh, the uh, eastern part of Turkey, uh, ever since the Ottoman Empire controlled that region. And they claim uh, all of that is theirs, which is not. They, they annihilated two million Armenians because they were non-Muslims in Turkey. And they, now they are starting to do it with the Turks, with the Kurds. But the, they can't because the Kurds fight back. And also because of the new uh, world, Mm -hmm. uh, information going out everywhere. They cannot do what they have done to the Armenians, but they tried. This is, this is so confusing to me. Uh, Turkey and the United States are allies. The Kurds and the United States are allies. The Kurds are fighting ISIS, yet Turkey's fighting the Kurds. I don't understand. It is complicated. However, uh, if, you, if you see the situation, basically it was created uh, by uh, by the current situation in in Iraq and the aftermath of the uh, uh, U U.S. withdrawing from Iraq, this whole situation was created, and Turkey uh, is has in the beginning uh, tried to uh, to help the ISIS because that was the idea, but now they're oh, oh, oh. Turkey helped ISIS, of course for a long time. They uh, in the beginning they were helping all the uh, factions against the Syrian regime, and ISIS was one of them. But now that uh, the West is against ISIS and they want Turkey to stop their aid and their uh, cooperation with them, they are starting to withdraw that. But they are still involved in, in a, to a degree uh, because of their uh, economic uh, advantages. Financial Times, uh, just December 1st, 2015, this headline is, Turkey still sees Kurdish nationalism as a bigger threat than ISIS. Is that true? Well, honestly, uh, they are I don't think it's true because they are starting the benefit of cooperating with the Kurds, especially the Kurds of Iraq. Most of the business is done in Kurdistan of Iraq is with Turkey. So the U.S. is trying to bring Turkey to see that an independent Kurdistan and a peace with the Kurds helps the region and their economy. But because the Turks are so racist against the Kurds and others, like Armenians, they can't see that. And they try, but they can't. They're completely blinded by that fact. But the reality is it's in, in the best interest of Turkey to have peace with the Kurds. Okay. They're not likely to change, though, are they? They have to if they want a better world for them and their children mm -hmm. and their, uh, you know, their generations. They have to. Peace is ultimately has to, to prevail. Is Turkey buying ISIS oil? That's what I read also, but I really don't know. I'm not an expert on that stuff, uh, but there, there's a chance, there's a possibility, because all this is going on. How do they get their weapons? How do they get their money? How do they sell their oil? Somebody's buying their oil. Somebody's buying it, and they're getting uh, arms from somebody. So it's, it's a, you know, basically a lot of countries have created the situation, including Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey, and now Russia. When the United States went into Iraq, uh, one of the first things that the Egyptian president at the time said is that uh, the United States has just created 100,000 bin Ladens. Was he right? The, the issue is much bigger than that, as you know. Uh, it started really with, uh, with, with this fanatism uh, in Saudi Arabia and, and, and also in Iran. But Saudi Arabia is another ally of the United States. Ally it used to be an oil ally, but not really strategically or uh, or fundamentally. I mean, not philosophically for sure. They are not Westerners, and they don't believe in the Western values of democracy and freedom. So how could they be an ally, except for oil business? Well, that's the that's the key, then, isn't it? That's the key. I think in Kurdistan, you just need to produce more oil, and then we'll like you. And that's what's happening now. I mean, the Kurds are 100% cooperative with, with America and the West. And not because of the oil, but because they love the values of the West. They love freedom. They love democracy. 
they appreciate freedom because they never uh, they haven't had it for uh, almost a hundred years so that's why they are so eager to reach out to to the west let's go back to saudi arabia for a minute though you you said something really very uh important and that is philosophically they're not allied uh allied with us at all um we know that bin laden came from from saudi arabia is that where uh, terrorists come from today? Is Saudi Arabia one of the big places where they come from? Well, they don't come from there. However, the, the philosophy that they are uh, promoting is creating this kind of mentality, this kind of extremism in, in, in that world. Th they are teaching, uh, their teachings are creating this kind of atmosphere. So they need to really change that uh, to, for a more peaceful way of looking at uh, the world and, and Islam and life uh, as a whole. So th their way of teaching their kids and, and the way they are promoting their line of uh, religion is really creating a lot of this. A and and they, they, uh, they promote it uh, with all their power and their money. And, th and countering that is Iran, of course. They are doing the same thing with their own faith and their own side of Islam. And, and, and uh, trying to buy people and affecting other countries, creating problems like in, in, in countries like Lebanon and other places, and Syria. I have to ask you this really very dangerous question. I don't even want to ask it, but I'm going to. Is war between the Islamic areas of the Middle East and the West inevitable? Well, I, I don't think uh, it's inevitable. Uh, I, I mean, I. I, I don't think it's going to happen, really, uh, as the Who's way you said stop it. it? Uh, uh, you know, th these uh, violent extremist uh, organizations will, will c try to, to make uh, the situation more dangerous and bigger. But uh, if, we act, uh, if we act decisively now, we can stop this kind of violence. And mm -hmm. without that kind of decisive action, it can get bigger and it can get worse. Well, Turkey took, took some d decisive action recently. They shot down a Russian plane. That wasn't. That was not a very wise thing to do at the time when they are trying to fight these terrorists. So th that's, you know, uh, I don't know what was the behind that, but uh, there's a lot of animosity between Turkey and Russia uh, historically, so that could be part of it. Uh, they don't see eye, eye to eye. Uh, However, uh, we need to stop uh, this violence uh, and these extremists right now before they become bigger and threaten uh, our peace and our freedom everywhere. Where do they come from, the terrorists? The terrorists are right now the vacuum that was created in Iraq and Syria has created uh, these people. The remnants of, of the uh, previous regime of Iraq, Saddam's regime, the Ba'athists, and remnants of Al-Qaeda and those kind of uh, mentalities and ideologies have kind of married these two and they created this violent new organization that's trying to control people uh, violently, of course, mm -hmm. and all at the same time trying to uh, use the internet and the web to control other uh, young people across the world to lead them into violence against their own people. Well, they're succeeding in doing that. And that's the danger, and that's why we cannot play politics with this as, as we are doing now. We have to be decisive and going in and finishing this kind of violence. What does that mean? Well, it, we, can't, we have to be decisive about this. What does that mean? It means to use all our resources, military, financial, science, uh, humanity, whatever we can, to go in and stop it, whether it's helping the Kurds get stronger and fight, which are the only people who are fighting terrorism right now, or going in with the, our military might and control uh, the areas and return it to peace. We have left a vacuum with our military power and which uh, it was filled with this kind of violence. So we, are res we have the responsibility, really, the moral responsibility to go back and, and clean up this mess. So when you say we, you're talking about America. America, of course. So we need a, a strong military presence in this area, is what you're saying. We need it right now, and but we don't need it always. We need it right now to clean up this mess, and then we can uh, uh, strengthen the Kurdish uh, people and the Kurdish country to take care of this. The Kurds have been able to clean their country from uh, terrorism since 2003. 
So they are capable to do that if they were helped in the right way. But you can't clean up Saudi Arabia. Well, that is another uh, subject that has to be worked on also. We have to, to stop our uh, oil-based uh, uh, friendships and say, listen, this, uh, this way of thinking and philosophy that you have uh, had throughout these years is creating violence in, in the world. You need to stop this. You need to change it because they are really part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Turkey and uh, Iran are the same thing. We need to, to stop them from uh, spreading their version of violence, too. Let's go to the map. Uh, the ISIS area, if, if you will, and it's, it's a moving area, seems to be in gray. It's taken over a, a good amount of Syria, a significant amount of Iraq, um, and it had moved towards uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, but then Kurdistan moved it back. Um, this area here is a very large area. What, what is it that ISIS, Daesh, whatever, what is it that they want? Well, of course they want to control the area with their, uh, with their uh, uh, weird mentality and philosophy. So is it just a land grab? It, it's a power grab. They felt, uh, you know, the Ba'athists, they lost power in Iraq, so they're coming back in this way to gain some power. And this is their way of, of uh, getting some power back. And they are mixing with that some Islamic uh, or religious ideas to, to give some legitimacy to their, uh, to their being there. Mm -hmm. But really what they are is, is remnants of the previous regime trying to control these parts of the country. They call themselves the, the Islamic State, but that's not accurate, is it? Uh, personally, I don't think it's accurate because their acts are not Islamic acts. Uh, uh, Islam doesn't call for killing the, the innocent and the, uh, the children and women and, 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 uh, and creating this kind of violence against humanity. Uh, but they can call themselves whatever they want. But the reality is they are uh, criminal groups that are controlling people by force and violence. And we need to use our resources to stop this. And otherwise, it gets, uh, it's like a poison and like cancer. It can spread around the world as it has recently. And, and actually, you know, I act fear for our freedom now. Honestly and truthfully, I fear that our freedom is in stake, at stake. Howard, we're, we're coming to the end of our first segment of this. And so we're going to have to come back for part two. And so you're going to stay with us, and we're going to talk more about ISIS and the Yazidis and what all can be done with this. Sure, gladly. Mm -hmm.